Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA here at Telecom Exchange Los Angeles. With me, I'm joined by Mr. Rudolph Gordon Seymour. He is head of international funding for TSF, Telecom Without Borders. For our viewers who may not be familiar with TSF, tell us a little bit more. Okay, well, um, TSF was formed uh, 21 years ago, um, and it was founded by uh, two people, uh, Jean-Francois Casanova and Monique Lane Petit, um, who were carrying out more traditional humanitarian work um, during the 1990s Balkans crisis. Um, and what became very apparent during that crisis was they were having um, uh, children adults come up to them with crumpled bits of paper in their shoe with a number on. Um, and they would be passing this to Monique and Jean-Francois um, and really um, asking them if they could, when they got home, if they could contact their family, their loved ones, their mother, their fathers, and, and really let them know that they were okay and let them know they were alive. Um, so that's, that's how it started and, and it became apparent at that point that communications uh, was no longer a luxury. Um, it was a necessity. Um, so the first uh, mission that TSF went on uh, was in 1999 um, in Turkey, northwestern Turkey, and that was the Izmit earthquake, um, which um, lasted 37 seconds, um, but um, it killed 17,000 people um, and it displaced over a quarter of a million people. Um, and in the last 21 years, Telecom Sans Frontier uh, have carried out uh, 140 deployments across 70 countries um, and supported over and reconnected over 20 million people um, and also supported nearly a thousand other NGOs on the ground. Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable. You guys are certainly known um, as the reliable first feet on the street uh, first feet on the ground, critical communications team in areas devastated by man-made or natural disasters. Uh, such important, as you said, communications uh, during times of need, uh, you know, telling a, a mother that the child is safe uh, can't be can't be further underscored as uh, the important work that you guys do. So thank you on behalf of our entire community. Thank you for what you guys do. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, yeah and I, I mean, I'd like to point out that the, the real heroes of TSF um, are the teams that go out on the missions, have to go out on the ground um, in what can be incredibly challenging conditions, um, especially during natural disasters, earthquakes, typhoons, hurricanes, floods. Um, and they have to deploy uh, within 24 hours anywhere in the world, um, which logistically um, getting teams out there with the right equipment to provide the right support on the ground, um, as you can imagine, is, is incredibly challenging. Yeah, just heroes. There's no, no other word. Um, now, beyond your support uh, in times of uh, disaster striking, you also have long format projects that you're working on. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, I mean, kind of touching on the kind of the core mission, and our, our core mission is to provide communications for life mm -hmm. and reconnect the unconnected, mm. yeah? Um, from the emergency response missions, um, we also roll out long-term programs. One of those is what we call capacity building. Um, and what we've seen in various parts of the world is reoccurring um, disasters. Um, so, for example, the Philippines. TSF have deployed in the Philippines nine times um, in that area. Um, so, what we try and do is actually provide the capacity post-disaster um, and actually run workshops for local responders in those countries um, to build up their knowledge of not only fixing telecoms infrastructure, uh, but also installing telecoms infrastructure. So they can be even quicker and better at responding on, on the ground. So that's, that's one area that we focus on. Other areas we focus on is education programs. Um, so we've been um, on the Syria-Turkish border for a number of years now providing education um, and what we call M-Learning. Um, so we will provide the ITT equipment um, on the ground and also a uh, curriculum 
um, for those um, refugee children, um, of which there are many. Um, and we are talking about uh, children who um, are a, a, a lost generation um, of education and childhood. Um, so there's different levels of children uh, um, that we have to provide education services to and all of those are at different levels. Um, so that's a really important part of the work we do. We also do uh, Bridging the Digital Divide programs, um, which um, we will basically provide um, ICT infrastructure. Uh, we do this in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we do it in Madagascar. Um, and we will actually provide the equipment and also the internet connectivity um, and we will then employ generally local staff on the ground in those countries to run the program and then we will um, visit it regularly to make sure it's all running properly. Oh, much needed access to areas just devastated and um, are these like one year pilot programs? What's the, what's the uh What's the timeline for these uh, long-term Well, programs? I mean, if we, if you look at um, the Syria problem, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, a war that's gone on for almost 10 years. Um, so, so we've been on the ground there for a number of years, four or five years, providing education. Um, and as long as we have the right funding, we can continue to provide those long-term programs. Um, we're also looking at other programs. Um, so one of, the, one of the pilots that we want to run um, next year, 2020, is what we call a Tech Labs program. And that's really kind of another level. I mean, we're going to run it in parallel to the education programs, but this is kind of focusing on technology. Um, again, it's, it's, it's targeted to children between the age of five and 10. Um, and we will uh, provide um, uh, programming workshops um, in a kind of a, in a fun way. Um, so we will provide a laptop with a what we call an M robot or an M bot um, and what they program um, and the programming blocks will then dictate what the robot does. So it's a really kind of fun environment to learn in. Um, and we'll also, we'll also provide um, workshops on basic things like fabrication and electricity. So the basic principles of electricity, uh, the the basic principles of um, repairing um, objects. Yes, yes. Um, so this is something that's really kind of close to our heart um, and, it's, and it's something that we want to run a pilot next year um, and also roll out to other parts of the world. So needed, so needed. That education so they can uh, grow up to be a stronger uh, generation that, that gives more to their communities as well. It's, it's amazing work. Tell us, in the spirit of the holiday season, how can we help? Well, um, firstly, uh, if people could take a look at our website, which is very informative, um, that's tsfi.org. Um, on there you will find um, lots of information about historical missions, lots of real-time updates on current missions um, and the longer-term programs. Uh, more importantly, there's two very clear kind of red buttons on there. Uh, one is donate and one is support. Um, so we take kind of micro donations. Um, we have an organization set up in the US as well uh, called Friends of TSF and that's for our US market donations. Uh, and then we also have a partner program. So Telecoms on Frontier is, is backed and financed um, over 80% from corporate um, telco technology companies. And we have some great long-standing partners. Um, and without them, we, we literally could not do the work we do. So I kind of urge people to have a look on the site, see what we do, um, and either micro-donate um, or look to become a partner. Oh, absolutely. TSFI.org. Yeah and donate or support. Rudolph, thank you so much for your time and sharing this amazing work and story of, of how you guys uh, you know, started the, the little kids with the phone numbers uh, to your founders and the, uh, the emotion that you guys you know, drives you every day to, to continue to be on notice 24 seven to, to answer the call. Uh, really amazing, we appreciate you. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.